Long Island, more than a foot of snow there. The storm really unleashed on Long Island. These are live. Despite one of the worst snowstorms to ever hit New York, we had to keep moving. The roads were bad, but our schedule for the day included a private tour of the Long Island Aquarium, followed by all of the fish stores in the New York area, so we weren't going to let ourselves miss out on all of that. When we got to the Long Island Aquarium, we learned that the snowstorm had forced them to stay closed for the day. This meant that we would be the only people inside. We met with Joseph Yeulo, curator and co-founder of the aquarium, to show us around. But, to help him give the tour, he brought out Pam the penguin. This is Pam. She was actually our first born penguin here at the aquarium. Oh wow. She's uh, eight and a half years old now. She's named after Pam from the office. was extremely impressive. Of course, I'm a little bit biased because I loved their 20,000 gallon reef exhibit, which measured 30 feet long and is home to approximately 800 different types of fish and other marine life. We were very lucky to have Joe give us a behind the scenes look at how they operate this massive ecosystem. He said that they pretty much follow all of the traditional methods of reef keeping, just on a much grander scale. Similar to the Berlin method, they do live rock and protein skimming. That's the protein skimmer. They dose a little bit of ozone, about one gram per hour, and everything is run off of Kalkwasser. He turned off the flow so we could have a clear view from the top down and let us do a feeding. There's about 25,000 watts of lights running on this system, made up of 10K, 14K, and blue halides throughout. From the top down, you could see a lot more coral that you couldn't see from the front, and it gave you a really cool perspective at just how big some of these pieces are. And with the light hitting them from above, the colors were so vibrant, it almost didn't seem real. Before we moved on, he told us this funny story of how one of their sea lions from the exhibit next door had once snuck out and made its way onto the platform here that you see us standing on. They caught it before it could jump in, but just imagine if you had to deal with a sea lion swimming in the reef aquarium exhibit. So now they put up this sign which serves as a reminder to keep an eye on those sneaky sea lions. The last thing Joe showed us was their cuttlefish tank. Now I've seen cuttlefish before, but I had never seen them hunt or eat. Joe put in some live food and it truly blew my mind to see how these cuttlefish reacted. Their tongues just flew out and snatched the food. It was pretty amazing to see so many healthy cuttlefish chasing down their prey. Before we left, we said goodbye to Pam and the rest of the penguins from the office. We had to start driving again if we wanted to see all the stores back in New York. We passed through Manhattan because our first two stores were just north of the city in Connecticut. The first was Greenwich Aquaria, a widely acclaimed store that opened 10 years ago in Riverside, Connecticut. 
We got there pretty early in the afternoon, so a lot of the coral wasn't out yet, but I did get to enjoy their large display tank that held a blue spotted stingray and some massive acros. This store had a really clean look inside, which is why I believe they've had success performing many tank builds and installations for customers. Our next stop was a store just down the street called House of Fins. These guys have everything. Like I've never seen so much diversity in one fish store. They had a lot of rare stuff, animals that I'd only ever seen photos of online. The coolest was definitely this feather star, which is classified as a crinoid. These guys usually don't live very long in reef aquariums, but even in the wild, they tend to reproduce after living just over a year. All the small things, true care, truth brings, I'll take one lift, your ride, best trip, always, I know, you'll be at my show, watching, waiting, commiserating, saying so, I will not go, turn the light I also loved their seahorses and nudibranch sea slugs, but my favorite animals that they had were their orange spotted filefish. You don't see these very often because they are very difficult to feed, but I think the color and structure of these fish makes it one of the most unique out there. We moved back into New York to a store called Gill's Aquarium, which had the biggest drop-off tank I've seen. It was almost 15 feet long, a really cool view from the front looking all the way down. Next was the Reef Shop in the Bronx, which I'd actually been to once before on my last trip to New York. This time though, they had a new manager, a sun conure named Arthur. We got off to a rough start because he was protective of showing me all his rare stuff. Yo, so what's the coolest thing you guys got here? He just pooped on me. <laughs> that's, that's, when, that's bonding though, that's some serious bonding. Now that Arthur and I had become bros, we did what any dynamic duo would do. We went outside, I showed him my whip, and then we flexed on all of our haters. Every day when you're walking down the street, and everybody that you meet has an original point of view. What's your favorite coral? Which? Yeah, I like LPS too, but I don't know. Yo, this bird's into the high-end SPS, man. All right, man, which one is it? Coral fish 12G. <laughs> Join the advert. The ad advert. Ad advert. <laughs> <laughs> Our next store was Country Critters, a very big pet store that carried everything from fish to ducks. They had a ton of marine tanks, this one with a skeleton head covered in coral. We spent a long time exploring Country Critters and then met up afterwards with Jared Goldenberg a really interesting guy who joined us for a few more aquarium stores. It was getting late, but we had three more stores to hit that evening. The first was Caribbean Blue Aquatics. They had really cool crosshatch trigger fish, a very expensive collector's fish. Scott had a great time handling some of their reptiles, but chose to pass on holding their gator. On our way back to New York City, we quickly stopped at Aquarium Village in Westbury, New York. To be young and in love in New York City To not know who I am but still know that I'm good long as you're here with me we headed into the city for our last stop, Manhattan Aquariums. This is the spot for all of the city dwellers to shop at since it's located right in the heart of New York City.
year are you going to? 1932! Why? I don't know! <laughs>